Without objection. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, it's been two years, five months, and 23 days since Lehman Brothers collapsed and the Wall Street dominoes began to fall. It's been two and a half years since Wall Street mortgage bond traders and their criminal management brought the world financial world to its knees. There hasn't been one person held accountable for it. Not one conviction. The biggest scandal in American history, and there's been no jail time for anyone. We Democrats cleaned up the mess. We saved the country from riots in the streets, but no one was convicted. I think a lot of voters, Tea Party voters included, are seething with anger about the injustice. Riding this wave of voter anger, two weeks ago this House passed one of the worst bills ever considered in Congress, H.R. 1, a bill the Republicans have called a budget that was nothing less than an attack on children and working people in this country. I think all the people who voted for it should be ashamed. Budgets are moral documents. They say what a country's priorities are. But looking at what the Republicans passed in this House, it's hard to believe that the bill is what Tea Party voters really bargained for in the last election. In the papers this week, we're reading that the Tea Party freshmen are now going to school. They are taking classes on the federal budget. Budget 101 is what they call it. So after they balance the, book, the books of the country entirely on the backs of children and women, they are actually learning a thing or two about the budget. It's about time. They're learning the basics after the vote, but they, I don't think the Tea Party voters wanted a war on children. Tea Party freshmen certainly didn't run for, on that basis. I think the voters look at what this country has been through in the last few years, and they see the terrible injustice of it. I don't think the Tea Party movement is about punishing women and children and poor people. I think they want common sense justice. America, Mr. Speaker, only 12% of the country's budget is spent on these important programs for the needy. When you cut these programs, you pull American children out of Head Start, you put Americans on the street, you let the bridges we go to work on crumble. That doesn't balance the budget. Without any changes in, in current policy, the budget deficit will drop $500 billion in two years. Now, that deficit will slowly rise again. This slow rise in the coming year is the big issue and is caused by two things. Increased health care cost and a defense budget that is out of control. Mr. Speaker, we're going to fix the long-term budget deficit of this country by lowering health care costs and by having a sensible defense budget. We aren't going to do it in an orgy of intolerance and demonization of the middle class and working people in this Republican budget. I think the Tea Party voters want responsible spending. So do my constituents. The Tea Party voters want basic fairness. So do my constituents. Tea Party voters have been misled by the American fear machine into thinking that education and basic services and public employees is where the big savings are. That is a terrible myth and a terrible disservice to the public. I hope the Tea Party members in the House quickly learn the basic math of the budget. The deficit's about defense and health care spending not about pushing even more children into poverty. Every member in this House ought to watch the 60-minute segment from last Sunday night on children who are living in cars, living in motels, living in shelters because they've lost their homes. 25 percent of American children in this country are living in poverty. That show looked like we were looking at Bangladesh. That's what we ought to be pointing to, not spending our time out here today on H.R. 830, whacking the daylights out of another bill to prevent foreclosures. It is simply not what America is about, and I urge all my colleagues to vote no and go and pull up on the web that segment from last Sunday night and look at the faces of those children and realize you're creating their lives by the kind of economy you put together. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Hoyer, for five minutes.
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to congratulate the gentleman from Washington State for uh, focusing America on what the issues are before.